Hello students, a warm welcome to all of you. In this module, we are going to discuss 12th chapter in our CBSC curriculum that is areas related to circles. The name of the chapter is areas related to circles. See, in this chapter, areas related to circles, what are we going to discuss? See, here in this chapter, the most important thing that we need to discuss about what are all the parts of the circle. So, what do you mean by parts of the circle and what is basically a circle means? A circle is the set of points equidistant from a fixed point. So, set of points equidistant from a fixed point is said to be circle and the circle means the circumference of the circle. Circumference of the circle. What do you mean by circumference of the circle? Circumference of the circle is nothing but length of arc of circle is circumference of circle. Of course, in our understandable language, you can call it as the boundary of the circle. Right? See, suppose if I have a circle... If I draw a circle, so this is one circle and this is center of the circle and uh, let us consider this one is radius of the circle. So the center of the circle and uh, any point on the circumference, when you join a line segment of center and any point on the circumference is called the radius of the circle. And we know that area of the circle is equal to pi r square otherwise pi into radius is equal to diameter by 2 so d by 2 whole square which is equal to pi d square by 4 so you can use pi r square otherwise pi d square by 4 in order to find area of the circle and then the circumference of the circle is nothing but length of arc of a circle so length of arc of a circle is circumference of circle is nothing but 2 pi times radius. Otherwise, you can write it as pi times 2r is equal to diameter. So pi d otherwise 2 pi r is the formula for circumference of circle. And suppose if I take a part of the circle, a part of the circle means, for suppose, this is a circle. Part of the circle means let can, it can be <clears throat> divided by the diameter. So the diameter divides the circle into two semicircles, half circles. See here, if you consider what is the circumference of the half circle, this is what is circumference of the half circle. So circumference of semicircle, circumference of half circle means circumference of semicircle is going to be half of circumference of circle. Circumference of circle is equal to 2 pi r. So, half into 2 pi r is nothing but pi r. So, pi r is circumference of semicircle. But here, I would like to tell you about the perimeter of semicircle. What is the difference between perimeter and circumference? See here, you know that perimeter and circumference comes under the same context. But especially in the case of half circle. See, this is the half circle. And... Uh, Perimeter of half circle means length of the entire boundary. Length of the entire boundary means, so this is the boundary, this is circumference of half circle, of course that is pi r and uh, it will also be considered, the diameter will also be considered as a part of perimeter of semicircle. Therefore, perimeter of semicircle is going to be, what is perimeter of semicircle is equal to pi r plus 2r, pi r plus 2r, otherwise pi r plus d is the perimeter of semicircle. Please do remember there is a small difference between circumference of semicircle as well as perimeter of semicircle. After that, I am going to take another part of a circle. So that another part of a circle is, this is what is another part of a circle. So this is the region of a circle bounded between two radii and a corresponding arc. 
the region of the circle bounded between both the radii and corresponding arc. So, this part of circle is said to be sector of the circle. Is said to be sector of the circle and this is radius, this is radius. So, this is R and this is R and this is length of arc of a sector of the circle, right? And for example, this is what is angle made by this arc at the center is theta. Then there is a relation between L R theta that is L is equal to R into theta. Length of arc is equal to radius into theta but exclusively theta should be measured in radians. Of course, what is this radian? What is this degree? You will definitely learn in the concept called trigonometry. Um, you already learned trigonometry. I think you have learned about this theta measuring in degrees as well as radians. So the relation between L R theta is L is equal to R theta where L is length of arc of a sector and of course R is the radius of the sector and theta is the angle made by the arc at the center. And exclusively the value of theta should be measured here in this case in radians. Okay. So for example, if theta is in degrees, if theta is in degrees, I just want to find what is the area of this sector. See, sector is a part of our circle. And the sector is making angle theta. That angle theta is a part of complete angle, right? Complete angle because angle at the center of the circle is equal to 360 degrees. So, this is theta which is theta by 360th part of the circle. So, therefore, with the help of this, we can understand one thing that area of sector what is that area of sector of circle is equal to theta by 360 into pi r square of course this is degrees so theta by 360 into pi r square why is this theta by 360 into pi r square because the complete angle is going to be 360 degrees this is theta parts out of 360 degrees that is why theta by 360 times area of circle. So this is what the formula for area of sector of a circle and similarly what is the formula for length of arc of sector length of arc of sector. So length of arc of sector is going to be area is equal to a length of arc is equal to for example l once you observe this is what this is a part of circumference right circumference is equal to 2 pi r how much part of the circumference again theta by 360 times 2 pi r theta by 360 into 2 pi r is the formula for length of arc of sector so you please do remember these two formulas because in our grade 10 cbsc curriculum we deal most of the areas with these two formulas, right? So I repeat, area of sector is equal to theta by 360 into pi r square, where theta is the angle made by the arc at the center, it should be exclusively measured in degrees. And similarly, length of arc of sector is equal to theta by 360 into 2 pi r, fine? And coming to the next part, here in this chapter, we deal with a few figures in order to find the shaded regions. So for example, there is a circle whose radius is given. Okay. And uh, there is a card, let AB be the card. And uh, AB is, the card AB is making an angle. For example, this angle is going to be 60 degrees at the center. Then you need to find what is the area of this particular segment. This particular segment is said to be minor segment. And radius is also given as some 7 centimeters. Radius equal to 7 centimeters. Then find the area of this particular part. Means area of this shaded region or area of this minor segment. In order to find area of minor segment, it is not easy to calculate this area directly. Got it? And then you will have to identify one thing that this part is one part of this sector of the circle. And if you find the area of the sector, you have a ready-made formula for area of a sector when angle is given, right? 
so you can find the area of a sector and then you can find the area of this triangle also what is this triangle here if one angle is equal to 60 degrees what about the other two angles you can easily identify since this is a triangle in which these two sides are equal because both are radii then the angles opposite to them are equal so that these two angles are equal and one angle is already 60 degrees so 180 minus 60 is equal to 120 that 120 is divided into two equal parts obviously 60 and 60 so what do you mean by that we identified one thing that if the angle at the center made by an arc otherwise made by the card is 60 degrees obviously the triangle is an equilateral triangle so if it is an equilateral triangle what is the formula for equilateral triangle root 3 by 4 times side square what is the side of the triangle radius itself is the side of the triangle therefore by using area of a sector minus area of equal triangle you can easily figure out what is the shaded region hope you understand and after finding the area of the shaded region it means area of the minor segment of the circle suppose if you are asked to find what is the area of the major segment of the circle what is area of the major segment the remaining entire portion is said to be area of the major segment of the circle already you found the area of the minor segment and to find the area of the major segment what has to be done you will have to find out the area of the entire circle minus already this was obtained you just subtract it then you can find area of the major segment of a circle easily hope you understand so this is one case and coming to the second case <clears throat> for example you are given a circle again like radius of the circle is given so for example this is a card let this card be some pq card and this card is making angle for example this is 120 degrees at the center and radius of the circle is given 7 centimeters and again you are asked to find what is the area of the minor segment of a circle so in order to find the area of the minor segment same concept is applicable here also but the only point here is how to find the area of this particular triangle see here one angle is equal to 120 what about the other two angles 30 and 30 so 30 and 30 means there is no equilateral triangle so if there is no equilateral triangle then how to find out area of this triangle then definitely use your brain if you think logically you just to drop a perpendicular from let it be O onto this card so then the perpendicular drawn to any card from the center will bisect it we already discussed about this so then if you observe this particular one of the right angled triangles for example this point is m for example triangle o m q this angle is divided into two equal parts by this perpendicular because these two triangles are congruent so that these two angles are equal so each angle equal to 60 degrees and 60 degrees see since this is 60 degrees and you know what is the radius that is 7 centimeters so by using our trigonometric ratios we can easily figure out what is the value of mq as well as what is the value of om also right you can find mq by using side opposite to 60 divided by hypotenuse means by using sin theta you can find out the value of mq after finding mq 2 times mq will be pq so you are finding what is the base and coming to the altitude this is the altitude right so in order to find the altitude again this altitude is the side adjacent to this angle and then 7 centimeters is the hypotenuse so by using cos you will get the value of om om is the corresponding altitude drawn onto this base so by using corresponding altitude as well as the base you can easily figure out what is the area of this triangle but if the angle is 120 degrees please be very careful right so if the angle is 120 so this is the logic logical point or technical point that you need to follow in order to find the area of the triangle again after finding area of triangle area of this entire sector by using x by 360 into pi r square as well by theta by 360 into pi r square minus area of this triangle just now obtained will give the area of the minor segment of a circle so hope you understand how to answer these problems let us uh, try to get into the problems which were given in previous board examinations right so <clears throat> the very first problem here is in the given figure uh, see here 
ए पी बी एंड ए सी क्यू डी आर सेमी सर्किल्स ऑफ डायामीटर सेवन सेंटीमीटर्स ईच सी हियर देर आर टू सेमी सर्किल्स इफ यू वन सब्जर्व दिस दो टू सेमी सर्किल्स आर द फर्स्ट वन दिस इज द एंटायर वन इज वन सेमी सर्किल ओके द एंटायर वन इज वन सेमी सर्किल एंड द डाउन वन इज ऑल्सो वन मोर सेमी सर्किल सी वेन यू ऑब्जर्व दिस दिस एंटायर थिंग इज वन सेमी सर्किल For this semicircle, see here it is given seven centimeters, seven centimeters, seven centimeters. So the entire line segment is divided into three seven centimeters. But this semicircle is going to be diameter is seven plus seven is equal to fourteen centimeters. Okay, this entire semicircle diameter equal to fourteen. So when the diameter is equal to fourteen, then the radius is equal to seven centimeters, obviously. And in order to find the area of the shaded region, see it is very much clear. that the shaded region is given in this way that this is the diameter the entire length a to c i am taking a to c and this is what one of the semi circles and uh, the diameter is going to be 14 cm this total one is 14 cm so that radius is going to be 7 cm and the another semi circle was given like this this is the another semi circle from here to here This is seven centimeters. So for the smaller semicircle, diameter is seven. From the entire semicircle, the diameter is equal to fourteen. So for this semicircle, radius is equal to seven by two. For the entire semicircle, radius is equal to seven centimeters. In order to find the shaded region, this is what is the shaded region. So to find out the area of the shaded region, it is very much clear that area of the entire semicircle minus area of the smaller semicircle. Will give the area of the shaded region, and that is the upper part. And to find out the bottom part, you have to multiply by two. So then, what we get here to obtain the area of shaded region, area of shaded region is going to be area of shaded region is equal to two times because there are two parts, right? So two times. Area of bigger semicircle. Area of bigger semicircle minus area of smaller semicircle. Area of smaller semicircle. So with this, we can find what is the area of the shaded region. So that I am using. the formula for the bigger semicircle i use capital r and for smaller semicircle i use small r now bigger semicircle radius is going to be this is the bigger semicircle diameter equal to 14 so radius is equal to 7 cm and the smaller semicircle diameter is 7 radius is equal to 7 by 2 cm right so two times area of bigger semicircle semicircle ray, uh, area is equal to half pi r square so half pi capital r square minus half pi small r square when i take half pi common out then it would be 2 times half pi times capital r square minus small r square so what is capital r square minus small r square here 2 and 2 gets cancel the value of pi is equal to 22 by 7 Capital R square minus small R square is capital R plus small R times capital R minus small R would be helpful for you to get easier calculation. So that implies twenty two divided by seven into capital R is equal to seven small R equal to seven by two. So seven plus seven by two times seven minus seven by two. Okay. So when you simplify this, capital Y is equal to twenty two divided by seven into What is seven plus seven by two? Seven twos are fourteen. Fourteen plus seven is equal to twenty-one divided by two. Into seven minus seven by two is one more seven by two. Now see the cancellation. One seven one seven gets cancelled. Two ones two eleven are twenty-two. So that eleven into twenty-one is equal to twenty-one twenty-one two thirty-one. So that two thirty-one divided by two. Is going to be two ones are two, two ones are two, two five are ten point five centimeters square is what is the area of the shaded region. So this way we can easily find out the area of the shaded region of this kind of figures, right? 
moving on to the next problem <coughs> here the next problem is a boy is cycling such that the wheels of the cycle are making 140 revolutions per minute so wheels of the cycle are making 140 revolutions per minute per minute 140 revolutions see suppose this is the wheel of the cycle this is the wheel of the cycle okay so here it is what is the floor that it is rotating 140 revolutions per minute in one minute it is making 140 revolutions so what do you mean by one revolution so one revolution is nothing but suppose if it start from here it is moving and rotating here see for example this is the point a the point on the circumference is equal to a and it is rotating for example this is the position of the cycle uh, wheel and the point a has the same position what do you mean by that the distance that it travel from here to here is nothing but one circumference what do you call that one circumference so it means one revolution is equal to one circumference one revolution is equal to one circumference And how many revolutions are there? There are 140 revolutions. So that 140 revolutions is equal to 140 times 1 circumference. 140 times 1 circumference means 140 times 1 circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Whatever the uh, diameter is, diameter of the wheel is 60 centimeters. So that it is centimeters. Then if I use this 140 into pi into 2 r. So pi is equal to 22 by 7, which is 140 into 22 divided by 7 into diameter is equal to 60 centimeters. So it is 60. When you simplify, 7, 1, 7, 2 are 14. So it is 20. So finally, what we get here, 22, 2 are 44. So that it is 44 into 6 into 100. So then what we get here, we get 6 4s are 24, 4 2, 6 4, 24 plus 2 is equal to 26 2 0 centimeters. This is what is the total distance that the wheel makes. Okay. And what is given here? Per minute, find the speed of the cycle. What do you mean by speed? So you know that distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. Distance equal to speed multiplied by time. So that speed is equal to distance upon time. Distance upon time. What is the distance here? Distance is 26400 centimeters divided by time is equal to one minute. Time is equal to one minute, but you need standard units that it should be uh, like meter per second, otherwise kilometers per hour. So that I'm going to convert this. See here, 26400 into 1 centimeter is equal to how many meters? 1 by 100 meters divided by this is 1 minute. 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds. So I can use uh, to convert them into meter per second. So that here two zeros and two zeros gets cancelled. And uh, I think I can cancel both of them by 6. 6 ones are 6, 6 fours are 24. Again 24, 6 fours are 24. So 44 divided by 10 meter per second, it means 4.4 meters per second. This is what is the speed of the cycle, right? So this way we can easily answer the problem. But here you need to understand only one thing that what do you mean by the distance in this particular case? See, one complete revolution is nothing but the distance traveled by that particular wheel is equal to one circumference. So one complete revolution is equal to one circumference with the help of this only information we can easily figure out what is the speed that it has you know uh, it has taken right. So uh, this way I think you can uh, easily answer these problems and we have a few set of problems in the textbook uh, that to find out the number of revolutions otherwise to find out the speed of the uh, cycle otherwise speed of the motorcycle this kind of problems. So these kind of problems can be easily calculated by this year. Hope you understand and enjoy the class. Thank you.